Ice cream bloke, self-appointed headmaster of Scoop School, and today we are answering or doing a demo on one of the most asked questions in the entire ice cream business. What's the best way to pack pints? This episode is actually brought to you by the Scoop School community because we've just finished up a live stream ice cream making session where we made this beautiful black raspberry cheesecake ice cream. Absolutely wonderful. And uh, we just gave a quick demo at the end of that video as to how to pack pints. Uh, and then Madeline and I were thinking, boy, we should really do a quick video on this because a lot of people ask uh, about packing pints. Best way to do it. Should you buy a pint packing machine? Should you not? Pros and cons. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, and again, it's brought to you by Scoop School Community. Every week we do a live stream session. We'd love to have you join the community. It's about 50 bucks a month. You can stay as long as you want. Just stay for one month and then say, this guy doesn't even know what he's talking about. And then you don't pay any more than 50 bucks. Uh, but you also get to look at all of the other video content on the uh, Scoop School platform. I think it's pretty good. Now, again, we've just made a black raspberry cheesecake ice cream. We have our pint containers here. As a general process, I always write the flavor on the bottom of the pint, um, only because when we're actually going to be stacking these, uh, we are going to stack them upside down. The reason why we do that is if the ice cream is soft, which it is, um, you don't want it settling. If you put it into the blast freezer like that, you don't want it settling uh, down. So you want to settle it up. Look, you won't, you're not after the process of uh, jipping people or saying, hey, we're not filling it up, but there always is settling. So we've got a number of black raspberry cheesecake pints here. Um, you'll save Sharpies by not writing on them when they're cold. If you forget to write on them, you fill it, you start writing when they're cold, this will be just about done. So when I extracted this out of the blast freezer, I actually did it, uh, and sorry, when I extracted it out of the batch freezer, uh, I didn't put it in the blast freezer, I just put it in our regular storage freezer. I don't want a lot of hard, crusty product on the top. I want it kind of a little bit more supple but firm. So once we pull this out of the, ba the batch freezer, we put it in our regular storage freezer for about 10, 15 minutes, firmed up a little bit, and then we set up our pint filling station here. Now, what we're doing is we're using Using, this is a number, excuse me for the glasses, a number a six disher. It's one of the largest ones you can get. And I know that it's about one full scoop and one half scoop to actually fill a pint container. So you simply just take one full round scoop here, drop it into the pint container, a couple of taps on the bottom, <coughs> excuse me, and then a half scoop on the top. Now that generally is enough to um, stack that, put a lid on it and flip it upside down, ready to go to the blast freezer. Again, one nice round scoop, drop it in. Try not to get any residue on the side here. You may need to have a towel close by just to wipe that up. Then another half scoop on the top. A couple of tops, taps, a couple of tops. Well, it is a couple of tops. A couple of taps and that one's ready to go. You don't want to overfill it to the point where you're pushing the lid down and it's oozing out of the side. Um, so you do get into a, a nice rhythm where, you know, it's pretty seamless. Um, and, you know, we've, we've certainly used companies like TD Sawville and other companies to use as a pint filler. And they're great products. But I honestly think that a team of three or four people can pack ice cream in pints almost as efficiently, if not more, um, than the expense of um, getting a pint filler. Because a lot of those pint filling units, what they end up doing is you're taking this product and actually putting it into a hopper. It's a non-refrigerated hopper. It's basically a stainless steel hopper that feeds down to a piston and that piston actually uh, goes through the process of filling the pints. Um, so again, you might get to the point where, let me get you out of the way here, um, where you've got the volume where you may justify that cost to do it. Uh, but I think, I spilt it a little bit there. I think for the most part, um, if you can get a good bunch of your employees to get together, 
together, play some uh, 90s, you know, alternate rock, and just have a good time packing pints, you can get it just as well done. Now, one thing I will tell you is that if you're not doing it quick enough, the bottom of the bucket will start to get very soft, and you'll have to make a judgment call as to how soft you want to put product in, because you don't want to have a totally thawed product, thawed product, and have it refreeze into the blast freezer. Um, so if it's really, really liquid at the top, you might need to make a judgment call. You don't want to refreeze it. You might need to just write that bottom bit off and, and use it as waste. But we pretty well got everything out of that uh, three gallon bucket. Uh, maybe one more, let's try one more. We're actually not gonna, we're not gonna fill this last one. Well, maybe we will. Still firm enough that it's staying in the scoop. That's a good indication. Um, no, maybe we won't. Maybe we will. No, we're not going to. Um, so that one, I'll take this one home to my wife. She loves the black raspberry cheesecake. So that's just a quick overview. I mean, we've packed two, four, six, eight, eleven 11 uh, in a relatively short amount of time while we're filming this. You have two kids that are, one's actually filling, the other's putting the lids on, they put it on a cart and they wheel that over to the uh, blast freezer. Uh, and then Bob's your uncle. You can get a pretty good process going along. Um, we're using um, soup containers here that actually has a hot cold lid. You don't have to use one of them. Uh, these lids actually have an insert in them. I find that it kind of, you can push some of that product against it so it makes a nice seal on it. You don't need it. Uh, I know that at the time of filming this, um, there's almost a, a nationwide shortage of these uh, pint containers because of we're kind of just post-COVID and everyone's packing pints. So uh, stay vigilant out there, try and get those pint containers. Um, but again, very easy way it's very efficient. You don't have to overthink things. You don't have to invest in a whole lot of filling equipment unless you got to the point where the volume necessitates it. That's pretty well it. Leave a comment out down below as to how you pack pints, whether this is the way you do it or not. Uh, again, do want to encourage everyone to check out scoopschool.community. The link is also down below. I think you'll find that there's a huge uh, bank of video content there as well as our live stream sessions every single Friday. The Scoop Squad love get, getting together in that live stream. A lot of Q and A as we kind of make recipes, make different products. It's a, I think a pretty good value. So that's it for this session. Uh, again, uh, subscribe, like, uh, look, go to the socials, go to the website. Just go everywhere, go everywhere, and yet stay at home. Keep on scooping, folks. We'll see you in the next video.